Welcome to another manual trans tech video. We're going to talk about the FRS throwout bearing today. <clears throat> so in front of me, I have a used FRS throwout bearing, the throwout bearing carrier from an AE86, and then also a used uh, front cover snout for the FRS, which um, this guy slides on. So. On the FRS, the carrier and the bearing is all one piece. On the AE86, the throwout bearing has to be pressed onto the carrier, so they're two separate pieces. One interesting reason why I wanted to do this video, check out in our channel, I'm doing the impulse transmission conversion for the AE86, and I was trying to figure out, do I use the FRS or the 86 throwout bearing for the transmission adapter. And while trying to figure that out, I found this interesting discovery. So yeah, it's, it looks like they're the same size. So looking closer, there's a lot of similarities with these two. Um, you can tell the height is different, but where the fork goes on, so right here and right here, these two are actually, I would say, pretty much identical. So as you probably already know, people have had a lot of problems with these original FRS throwout bearings. So I'm curious if the AE86 throwout bearing could be used as a possible alternative because this guy has been really reliable. So what are some problems with the FRS throwout bearing? So commonly this bearing mechanism will get seized up. This is a really crappy design. It's open face. It feels like it's just some loose ball bearings in there. Uh, when I say open face, back when I was a Subaru tech, the WRX, so like a 11 WRX has the same throwout bearing design except this face was a little more shallow, which made it worse because then, um, you know, all this clutch wear material and other crap can get in from both in here and then through the face too. So there was a running joke like we were doing WRX clutches at 15K because these things would go bad all the time from, you know, all the material going in here. The other thing too is where this guy rides on the snout. This grease trap is really shallow. Um, if you compare it to, this guy has a much deeper grease trap. So with this shallow grease trap, it's easy for excessive heat buildup and then of course lack of lubrication. These got a TSB or an update at some point um, when I was a Subaru tech, I was only there for two model years of the BRZ. So I'm not exactly sure what the update was. But one thing I've heard is that they used a different different type of grease. And I'm sure it had to be a more heat resistant grease. Um, again, in part because of how shallow this grease trap is cut. So let's take a look at the AE86 throughout bearing. So this guy is a really robust design. I don't think I've, how many Corolla clutches I've done, I don't think I've seen any of these like outright fail. So this is a sealed bearing. And uh, you can see just physically, I mean just visually how much more tough this guy looks. Another advantage versus those two guys is that this is deceptive. That's not actually like an open area. The open half where the bearings are, or where these two halves are assembled together is actually the back half. So there's essentially zero chance of crap getting into this bearing. And then, yeah, I'll show you, these two actually need to be pressed on like that. So that would be an interesting alternative if uh, these legs were positioned so that the height of these two guys were the same. I think this would be a really good alternative um, or upgrade for the FRS throughout bearing. And you can see the faces of these where they contact the clutch fingers pretty dang much the same too. So who knows? 
All right, one last issue with the FRS throw bearing is the actual snout itself. Back in the day, these used to be steel constructed. Now these are aluminum. I'm sure it's for cost savings, but you can see so much for cost savings. The OEM throw bearing will actually wear grooves into this aluminum. Again, that shallow grease trap doesn't help out. So, so that compounds to the problem where like, when you're pressing on the clutch, this guy can get jammed up and cock on this shaft as well. Doing a clutch and you discover that there are grooves on here. So I'll use a sponge and then I'll put like a piece of 600 sandpaper and try to go as evenly as possible. After the 600, clean this off and I'll do a 1500. And then ho hopefully the damage wasn't so bad. If you're feeling like deep grooves in this guy, like this is pretty rough. I'm pretty sure I would replace this, but if you're feeling deep grooves in this guy, you probably need to replace that. This is a brand new unit from Subaru. This was about 80 bucks. Um, you probably need to special order this. I think it took like four days. So it's not like, it's not normal for a Subaru dealer to stock these. But really important, there's a grease seal in here. And this thing already comes with the grease seal for the input shaft. So I didn't know that. So I bought a separate one. So whatever, keep both of these guys in stock now. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Check out the Auto House podcast. And if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please leave a comment below or hit us up on any of our social channels. Thank you guys again.